having funding available to do protection works on sites that are identified by community on private lands is a real big bonus and it goes a long way. This project in particular, you know, we're talking about rabbit controls and the sort of impacts that the rabbits are having on these sites. I was lucky enough to be the project officer slash manager of uh, the Willandra rabbit control project that ran from 2018 to 2023. Got to meet some great traditional owners, some great landholders and contractors doing some great works, looking after the outstanding universal value in the Willandra World Heritage Area. So initially the landholders would go out and map their rabbit warrens on feral scan and then we would engage with the World Heritage team and the traditional owners to go out and assess each individual warren. And through that, on this particular site, they realised that an area that had been fenced off around a burial site on a private property, the rabbits were actually really decimating the, the landscape and causing a lot of erosion. So uh, the World Heritage team approached us about fencing it, potentially upgrading that fence to make it rabbit proof. Through the rabbit control project, we didn't have any funding to actually do that sort of work, but that's where we were able to partner up with the Pathways to Country program to be able to fund that fence and upgrade it. Part of my role is um, implementing our Pathways to Country program. And the main focus of that program is getting Aboriginal communities back out onto country and accessing traditional knowledge and traditional resources as well as um, sharing their knowledge around land management practices and um, site protection and things like that. There was um, the fence around this site was about 1.7 kilometres and it, initially it was uh, five strand wire uh, and that was uh, I think put up back in the 1980s at, at some point. Um, then it got upgraded to ringlock mesh in the well, early 2000s. This time we upgraded it to rabbit proof mesh and it's uh, about a 15 hectare site that's protected now. We were able to engage the younger guys that to go out and do the actual physical work to uh, do the fence upgrade, but they had been out there in the landscape with the um, elders that under their sort of mentorship or, or guidance to you know what to look for in the in the landscape, and they did a great job. Just got in and got that job done, putting up uh, the extra mesh and then the skirt to keep the rabbits out, and it's, uh, it looks like a really really good successful job. The way our communities work together and share our knowledge, um, how we include the younger people and bring those guys into understanding what connection to country really is and caring for country and things that that can't happen in a classroom, that has to happen out on country. Yeah, it all contributes to the community as a whole and um, retaining that information and that knowledge as well as passing that on. There might be future opportunities through works we're doing continuing on out in the Willandra area. We might find other sites that need protection and we'll be able to work with the World Heritage Team and the traditional owners and the landholders to be able to protect more sites out there. There's a lot of overlaps, I think, between um, landholder views and community views. Um, but when you really sit down and start having deeper conversations with people, you see that in the end, a lot of the times, we're looking for the similar results. Yeah, just seeing how they can work together and come up with alternative ways of doing things and benefit everyone, not only um, the landholder, but community as well. Yeah. Seeing the results that can come from those relationships is really special. <laughs>